With the recent introduction of Express LRS into the FPV community, I think it's good time to explain the main difference as a beginner between the most common or the most popular FPV radio control protocols. I'm going to be talking about three specifically, starting with FR Sky D8 and D16, then moving on to Crossfire, and ending this video with Express LRS. Some time ago, FR Sky D8 and D16 protocols were dominating the market. D8 was the first one, D16 came as an upgrade. It didn't live to the whole promise because at the end of the day, sometimes you got much better range with the D8 than the D16. The FR Sky receivers protocol was so famous that a lot of people, a lot of companies started to copy it, doing their own receivers based on that protocol and including them in the FC, in the flight controller of some drones, the all-in-one flight controllers. Some of them started to come with an FR Sky SPI receiver. At the same time, FR Sky produced very good radios, like this one, the Taranis. And they, as I was saying, they dominated the market. They had good radios, they had good receivers. Manufacturers were integrating those receivers into their drones. Bind and Fly drones came configured with FR Sky protocol. And that's why they were so big and popular. But FR Sky binding procedure was never the easiest one. You needed to have kind of like four hands if you were using just a battery or you had to be a little bit creative in order to do a solution in your bench that can allow you to use in like a power supply using a switch, how to bind the drone and how to do uh, upgrades. Upgrades were also a little bit complicated. You needed to have a specific radio and connected with cables in order to do upgrades of the software of your receivers. Then of course the first guy got even more complicated because they wanted to protect what they've been doing and they started to create new versions of the software encrypted and some other differences that got very messy. You needed to have a specific version of a radio in order to bind with some uh, receivers. The receivers, you didn't know which kind of firmware they had when you bought them. So you had to be kind of by trial and error upgrading them until you could finally find the right software to bind with your radio and people started to get tired of that. Somewhere around that came Crossfire, which is a protocol created by a company called TBS. Crossfire is simply amazing. It gives you long range, it's very stable, supported greatly by the community, and it's been with us so long that the protocol itself is quite mature. It quickly became the golden standard for FPV flying. If you didn't want to fail safe while flying, if you didn't want to think about your radio protocol while flying, you will go Crossfire. Crossfire got the help of the fact that TBS is a very good company producing a lot of good products and the Crossfire ecosystem just kept growing. Crossfire was also much easier to buy than FR Sky and Crossfire had something innovative at that time which was over-the-air firmware upgrade. A lot of people jumped into the Crossfire and a lot of people got to know this protocol very well, which meant also that this, the community will support this quite a lot. If you have a question about Crossfire, you can shoot it out anywhere in any forum and you can be sure that someone is gonna help you because they, they had that experience or it, they know about the protocol itself. In order to run Crossfire with your radio, you needed a module, a module like this one. There were different modules depending on what radio you had, but at the end of the day, something that is so important for this whole story is that Crossfire belongs to TBS and it's only one company. TBS is the only company that can create it. That means that if TBS has production problems, you're gonna have difficult times to find receivers or modules or anything related with your, your Crossfire. TBS created a good radio, the Tango, which had Crossfire integrated. So you didn't need a special module or an external module in order to run Crossfire. The second version of this radio, the Tango 2, it's super popular. 
very very difficult to find on any shop it's always out of stock it sells amazingly and is a favorite radio amongst the people that likes the small form factor the playstation style controller if you like that shape the tango 2 from tvs is the radio to go a little bit of a side story here in order to keep the history straight remember that i told you that fr sky was trying to protect their piece of the cake well it is so true that when crossfire started to produce these modules fr sky actually did some hardware changes to the radios in order for these modules not to be compatible with fr sky radios of course tbs got around it and they even ship the the modules today with a piece of hardware that you can install on those radios that can that doesn't support and then you get the module to work back but this is the kind of things that the first sky did that didn't fit very well with the community and started to make the users a little bit uncomfortable with the first sky nowadays you can find radios like this one the radio master tx 16s which are multi-protocol meaning that inside the radio you have a, a module that allows you to connect to different radio protocols fr sky of course is one of the ones that you can connect so d8 or d16 are available internally in these radios crossfire it's not available internally again because of what i was saying of being proprietary but you can connect the module on the back of the radio you just connect it like this and you have your radio to use with crossfire these multi-protocol radios became also very popular now because then it meant that you could have your tiny whoops in a first sky and your regular drones with crossfire and if you had something else that you are flying wings or something like that using a different protocol you will be covered with a multi-protocol radio like that one 2021 is the year when the express lrs was launched with a very similar offer than crossfire when it comes to long range and stability of the link but with small difference when it comes to latency and the way that you could connect to your receivers in order to upgrade them and use them one of the best part of express lrs and something that makes it very interesting is that it's based on an open source project this means that any company, any manufacturer that is interested on Express LRS can create their own receivers, their own modules, and they will be compatible between each other. You can start seeing right now companies like Beta FPB or Happy Model, and even I believe Flywood is doing it. They're starting to create their own receivers, selling them very well in the market, and as I said before, if you get a receiver from one of this company and a TX model from another one, as long as you are in the same version, they're going to be able to talk to each other. This reduced the, the problem that I mentioned before with one company owning the whole protocol. If one company here has a problem producing receivers, maybe the other company doesn't and you're still going to be able to buy and use them together. With the introduction of Express LRS, we got some new cool stuff as well. One of them is this called ceramic antenna on the receivers. You can see these receivers with very, very small antennas integrated in the receiver. You don't need to have any cable or hang antenna on it, which still had very long range and very stable connection. This is a game changer, for example, for small drones where you don't have a lot of space to place your antenna. Express LRS also added Wi-Fi to the receivers and the TX. And now you can upgrade the firmware of the receivers using Wi-Fi. It did also something that is pretty cool and I like quite a lot. And is during the process of upgrading the firmware, you can insert a phrase to the radio and to the receiver and whenever these two are on and if they have the same phrase they will just bind this simplifies the binding process quite a lot you just get your receiver you upgrade to the version that you know your tx is you add that phrase during the process and then when you turn on your drone they are bound 
it's so cool it's pretty easy manufacturers are starting to create all-in-one cards with express solar racing this drone is one of the first one having that kind of cards and i think you're gonna see this more and more express solar race is going to most probably replace fr sky when it comes to small drones or all-in-one card with integrated receivers one because it gives much better range and secondly because it's open source and then each manufacturer can integrate these without high cost or without the problem of being probably sued because they're using somebody else's protocol. Bind and fly drones are also starting to come with Express LRS as an external model, but they are starting to be sold like that. And I think this is also something that we're going to see growing and growing with time, where people start buying Express LRS for the radios, manufacturers start selling buying and fly drones with express LRS as an option and at the end of the day you will see that most probably people will have to choose between crossfire and express LRS and FR Sky is going to disappear in time but today FR Sky is still kicking and alive many small drones are still coming with SPI integrated FR Sky receivers the multi-protocol radios like the Radio Master has as a main protocol, I would say, FR Sky inside that multi-protocol module that they have. But I'm pretty sure that soon enough we will see radios like this one upgrading to maybe an internal Express LRS module. And then you will be able to have Express LRS internally and Crossfire externally if you have a mixture between them in your drone collection. I really doubt that Crossfire is going anywhere because first of all, if you have already invested in Crossfire and you have a few drones with Crossfire installed, there is no real reason to change to Express LRS. Both of them are great protocols, both of them give you long range, both of them are very solid and stable. As I, as I mentioned, the differences are kind of small between Express LRS and Crossfire. And it will be much more about if you're starting in the hobby, which one would you choose? Uh, if you are thinking about investing quite a lot in having many drones, maybe you want to consider Express LRS because it's a little bit cheaper than Crossfire. But if you have already bought Crossfire, there is no real reason to change to Express LRS yet. When we talk about these three protocols, as I've been mentioning, I think FR Sky is the one that it's a little bit on the edge of being pushed out of the whole equation. While Crossfire and Express LRS will stay here and dominate the market for quite some time. Here you have a little bit of history and explanation about these three protocols that I believe are the ones to know about when you're starting in this hobby. I hope this was something helpful for you and if it was, consider subscribing to my channel and maybe liking this video. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.